I was working as a research scientist at a pharma company. And when I was working as a research scientist, I realized that hey, this is not what I want to do um, with my life. And when that realization happened, that hey, this is not what I want to do with my life, then I asked myself the question that if you don't want to become a research scientist anymore, then what do you want to be? The answer that came from within was, I don't know. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this or watching mm -hmm. this uh, will be able to relate to um, this, right? Where maybe you have been in the spot where uh, in the place where you didn't enjoy what you were doing. Also, you didn't have clue about what you should be doing next. So my parents wanted uh, me to go to the US and uh, um, I was topper at my college and I was preparing for GRE. I was doing podcast. I would go and study GRE, uh, you know, for a, for a few days. And then that would bore me to death thinking that I already hate my job and I'm going to go in uh, take masters in the same for the next uh, two years and then leave the rest of my life becoming, you know, in the lab, which is something that I can't imagine. Um, and then I'll go back and focus on podcast. And my parents would notice that he's not, you know, doing any of the GRE prep. And they'll say, hey, what's up with this? And I said, oh, okay, I'll go that. And this kind of switching happened for a while. And then one day I told them that, hey, you know what? This is not what I want to do with my life. I packed all my, uh, you know, GRE stuff and um, threw it in the corner of the house and said, okay, this is it. Just give me one year of my life. If I'm able to make anything out of this, great. If not, then I'm going to live the rest of the life in your terms. But I need one year of my life from you. And, uh, and my dad ended up not talking to me for two weeks. Hey, this is your host Manakshi Shivaswa, also known as My Boho Voyage, and I welcome you to another amazing episode of Inspiring Explorers. And as the name suggests, Inspiring Explorers is all about inspiring you with the inspiring life journeys of some of the most successful personalities from around the world, and they also share with us some interesting travel experiences that are not limited to sightseeing. For this episode of Inspiring Explorers, we have an inspiring explorer who happens to be an absolutely epic podcasting guru of more than 25k plus people, including me, Bijay Gautam. Bijay Gautam is also the host of the immensely popular podcast show, The Inspiring Talk, with over 1 million plus listens and ranked hash one in the personal growth category and has interviewed some of the most successful personalities from around the world on his podcast. Vijay is also the co-founder of Pine Studios, also known as What's Your Narrative, and has served brands like Amazon, Nokri.com, Spotify, Mama Earth, and more to tell their brand stories through the power of podcasting. Apart from being an accomplished podcaster, Vijay is also a public speaker and has been invited to speak at conferences like Professional Speakers Summit, FFX Festival, BlogX, and many more, sharing his insights on the personal transformation and inspiring others with his story. So what is Vijay's story? How did he change his own narrative to becoming a podcasting guru and the host of one of the best podcast shows in India? Join us in this episode of Inspiring Explorers to hear Vijay's incredible inspiring journey. And before we start this episode, let me tell you that you can watch all my Inspiring Explorer episodes on my YouTube channel, My Boho Voyage. You can also listen to them on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. Just search for Inspiring Explorers on the apps and you'll find the show. All the links are mentioned in the description box below. So do go check them out and also come connect with me on Instagram at the rate My Boho Voyage. So without any further ado, let me welcome our amazing guest for today, BJ Gotham. Welcome to Inspiring Explorers, Bijay. Super, super excited to have you on Inspiring Explorers. Thank you, Minaxi, for having me one more time. And you conveniently sent me a message saying that last time at Chani Bola Apne, so uh, <laughs> I'll <laughs> give you an opportunity, another opportunity. So I'm like, okay, I would definitely love to take another shot at, uh, you know, doing an episode which possibly or hopefully <laughs> qualifies as for your standard. So let's do it. <laughs> I didn't say it. I, I said that it didn't, like you said amazing things back then as well, but your mic just fell off in the middle. There were a I lot know. of static and mm. you were in Nepal that time. I oh, could hear your yeah. beautiful Nepal, you know? Okay. Got it. Hmm. Yeah. Now we have like fancy setup. I hope this, um, uh, and, uh, uh, 
and mike can fall off in between but um <laughs> but it will fall in a more classy way you know <laughs> yeah that's cool so yeah. we can show more classier version of wine studios <laughs> <laughs> yes let's do it let's do it so very very first question to you bitter that i think a lot of people might have a query on that you were you used to be a scientist so being a scientist to now becoming a podcaster and that to not just a podcaster you're india's top podcaster so how did that switch happen in your life um you know one of the things that i always uh, tell when i'm talking about my own journey is i was working as a research scientist at a pharma company and when i was working as a research scientist i realized hey, this is not what i want to do um with my life and when that realization happened that hey this is not what i want to do with my life then i asked myself the question that if you don't want to become a research scientist anymore then what do you want to be the answer that came from within was i don't know and uh, i'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this or watching mm -hmm. this uh, will be able to relate to um, this right where maybe you have been in the spot where uh, in the place where you didn't enjoy what you were doing also you didn't have clue about what you should be doing next and uh, maybe some of you are in that space right now now when that realization happened i asked myself if you know uh, if that's the case luckily for me i was exposed to this whole world of personal transformation i was reading a lot of self help books attending conferences watching ted talks and getting inspired by these amazing people and i thought hey you know what let me ask these people on how they figured out what they wanted to do in their life right and uh, i thought that would be interesting way for me to try and find my own blueprint on what should i be doing next in my life with that intention i you know i started interviewing people and bring them on my show and uh, you know share it with the world and that's how i realized wow this is really interesting i think this is what i can do for the next rest of my life right and um and and that's how i sort of got into podcasting uh, it was me trying to figure out my own try to sort of as they say scratch you on back so that was me trying to sort of solve the solve um you know find the answers for my own life and journey and that still holds true today um i'm a big student of personal growth and i love exploring the ideas of personal growth and experiment and then play with them uh and uh, you know my show today is now more evolving you know is more um evolving as a go to personal transformation podcast where we go really deep into the personal growth personal transformation ideas and um and uh, deep dive into it and uh, and and i find the people who can help me understand the concepts that i want to understand so i bring people who are experts in the topic and learn from them so it's essentially uh you know a personal mentorship that i get from these amazing people on my show but i just give it the name of a podcast so i think that's what you know that's how i sort of transition from being a research scientist to um you know doing a podcast and then because i love the medium so much i said um you know i want to uh, help a lot of people do the same as well share their messages and look at you you are doing the uh same with your podcast and also work with brands and help them with their brand narratives and that's what we do at wine studio and i think uh, not just your podcast but wine studio is also doing a very amazing job together with your team not just in terms of the podcasting but also in terms of being the best kind of workplace <laughs> i see a lot of things that you do new and new things with employee experiences like um those letters that you put up in the wall and then sugar cubes we call them sugar cubes right yeah yeah yeah, yeah i think uh, you know from the um work culture perspective one of the things uh, me and my my co-founder uh, you know sonia we both we had our own experiences with our bosses in the past right so even when i was working as at that job as a research scientist um you know it it was very um sort of you know of course like how most of the corporates are um people couldn't talk they couldn't share what they were feeling you were put in a box and you were supposed to do what was given to you ask no question and uh, you know somehow i couldn't resonate with that you make a mistake and the boss will like you know um um will will quite literally like make make you cry till the time you cry they would they won't you know and and so when i was when i came from that one thing that i knew at my heart was this is the last thing that i 
want uh, if I ever run a company and if there are people working with me, this is the last thing that I want them to feel. So, um, you know, and uh, to, 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 so today at Wine, anybody can share what they are feeling. Anybody can uh, come up with ideas. And of course, that's also the beauty of, you know, running a startup versus, uh, you know, uh, you know, somebody who might be running a big company. Um, you know, people can come up with their own ideas, their own projects and work on it. And, uh, uh, and they have a tremendous amount of freedom in what they want to do, how they want to do it. Um, and uh, at the same time, have a lot of fun doing it, right? And uh, so so that's something that I personally resonate with, that kind of called culture where anybody is free to come up with idea and do the work the way they would like. Uh, one thing that I've realized is uh, also we in our culture, uh, including myself, I'm not, you know, um, you know, in, in mostly in the, um, you know, South Asian countries, uh, we are not the people who, um, you know, who, who are very, we are not somebody who are very dedicated to the work as such. And when you give a freedom, like you do, whatever you do, then, you know, um, it's finding a balance between having a bit of a structure and also giving the freedom. So that is the balance that I'm st uh, still trying to, uh, you know, uh, sort of find because, um, so for instance, right. So I have friends in Europe and when they talk about like, when they go to the work, then they barely reply back on WhatsApp or, uh, you know, or text and stuff like that. Um, and the, after five, they just shut down the work, right? And in our, uh, you know, in our culture here in India, like people are working till there is no uh, work-life balance. People are working till late in the night. And also it's both ways, right? So the culture is, work culture is such you are expected to stay late in the office. Um, so while, you know, when, when my friends say that hey, in Europe, people encourage you to, you know, leave office early, go home on time, spend time in the park, play with the kids and so on and so forth. We don't do that. Our The expectation is also for people to sort of, uh, you know, you got to stay back till seven or eight or nine. I remember during my um uh, office uh, or when I was working the person who used to leave the office last was seen as somebody who was the most productive or somebody who was doing a lot of work but which wasn't true right and they were not able to manage their work on the time that's why they are staying late but that was not how the bosses would perceive oh if somebody's staying back that means the person must be doing a lot of work but those were the people who would uh, only start their work after the first half so that they can stay you know late um in the in the night right so um so i think that's that that is something that is ingrained in us that you know people staying back is um and and so on and so forth so we don't have that balance and also on the other hand like the people who work also in that seven eight hours of the time that you are at the office um if you really look at we have never been this distracted we are not giving our 100% at the work, right? And I think barely we are at 50, 60% of the productivity if we really start, you know, tracking the productivity of how productive we are at our work. Um, we probably are at 50, 60% of what we should really be doing. It's not that, um, that oh, you know what, you should be doing a lot of things than your capacity. If we are saying that, okay, if the person said that, yes, this is doable in a week's time and comfortably so, and even if that task is assigned and, you know, if you at the end of the week sit down and uh, work on the, you know, how much of those tasks were really accomplished, then, you know, the productivity would be somewhere around 50, 60%, which is something, you know, that, um, um, so that's where I, you know, that's why I said like, you know, it's, it's about finding that balance between letting people find that work-life balance and not feel that, oh gosh, I've got to go to the office, you know, uh, today as well. Uh, and also business of the work not suffer at the same time. So I think, you know, that's the balance, honestly, I'm trying to find. It happens, it happens. So but by the way, how did the idea of Wine Studios come in? Like you started podcasting, okay, you were a scientist and then you thought, oh, okay, I'll start podcasting. But then Wine Studios, how did the idea came out for that? Um, so, um, you know, when I started my podcast, uh, after one and a half years of doing my podcast, I... Well, I, I left my job because I was consulting CastBox, which is the podcast listening app. They were looking at somebody who can look at India for them. So I joined them as a, a content director for India. And uh, I was curating content for them and doing stuff 
and that's also the time when I started, uh, you know, teaching people on how to start podcasts because a lot of people were like, hey, you know, you know what, you've been doing podcasts for almost two years now, you know, been thinking of starting a podcast, can you help? And I said, I haven't thought about it, I can try. So I put together a program, I I was teaching people, you know, podcast. Um, so I was working from home, this was 2018, I just quit my job, I, you know, I was being paid in dollars, and I was at home, I was coaching people, consulting. So I was making, you know, good money and all of that. But I was bored. I was bored just sitting at home. And I realized that I'm not the kind who can do same thing for a really, really long time. So I need to find some new stuff. Or even if I'm doing the same thing, right, for the quite literally for the past six years, I'm the only thing that I'm doing is podcast, but I'm finding new ways to sort of, you know, uh, do things. So I said, okay, I'm bored teaching people how to create podcast on Zoom. I need a vacation. I need a chutti. You know, that's when I said, uh, I spoke to Chetan, I think has been guest on a podcast as well, Chetan Mahajan. Yes. Uh, so he runs Himalayan Writing Retreat um, in the, you know, mountains. So I spoke to Chetan and I said, Chetan, you do these writing retreats. I would love to do a podcasting retreat. And uh, it sounds like an interesting idea, BJ, let's do it. So July 2019, uh, we put together the first ever Himalayan podcast retreat and uh, 10 people joined that retreat. And uh, it was a three-day program for me. It was, like I said, it was a chutti that I took. I said, okay, three days, I'm going to chill in the mountains. And here are the people who are going to be paying for this. So life sorted. And, uh, you know, Chetan offered that if you want to stay back for a couple of days, feel free to, uh, which was great. So, you know, and third day of that event, one of the um, participants of that uh, workshop, Sonia, she said that, hey, let's have a let's have a chat. We got talking. So the crux of that, you know, conversation that we had, uh, in the mountains is that Sonia was trying to do something of her own as well. She was exploring the idea of helping brands share their narrative. She was yet to nail down on what the format is going to be, you know, what medium is going to be and stuff like that. Uh, also, I was thinking of setting up a, you know, um, a, a podcast company. Uh, back then, I had, uh, you know, investors um, who was ready to invest and stuff like that. I was pretty much like, you know, in the process of setting it up. And when we had a conversation, I felt that, you know, hey, she comes from a business background and I've never done a business. So I think it would be an interesting idea to sort of work with her in this. And then I worked with Sonia. You know, we after the crux of that conversation is we decided that, hey, let's do it together. Let's build it together. And uh, we came back from the retreat and September is when we officially registered the company. And yeah, I mean, that's the that's the story of WINE and W-Y-N actually stands for What's Your Narrative? The whole idea is and we we keep on, you know, we ask people, Kahani kya hai? So essentially, the idea is to help brands share their narrative. Now, it's not a part, only a podcast company. We've now evolved from just being a podcast company to a full-fledged creative content company where we work with brands and then work on uh, entire content spectrum, right? From text, audio, video, interactive content, uh, and so on and so forth. Exactly. And some of your shows have reached millions of uh, listens again, created by Wine Studios, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of experimentation. We just mm. love uh, doing that, created different formats, we've created different um, structures, we've played a lot with on, on the, diff, you know, on the podcast format. And uh, we have seen most of the original shows that we have produced have been on, uh, you know, number one chart in their respective categories, which is something that has been constant with any of the shows that we have produced, which shows that audience to a certain extent have loved the kind of stuff that we're putting out. And also maybe we know a little bit about uh, what kind of content people want to hear and how we can package it better so that it resonates better with them. Exactly. And uh, a lot of those shows have been loved by a vast number of audiences. And they have been even in the narratives. If you listen to those shows, you kind of reach to those places. For example, one of those so Practically Bhagavad, Gita. Yeah. yeah it's a, a Srimad Bhagavad Gita yeah, based show. But uh, we said that, hey, you know what, we want to do a Bhagavad Gita podcast, but the common general notion of the people about Gita is like, hey, um, people look at most of the bhakti side of things, right? So what that means is people look at most of uh, things like, hey, you know, you just go ahead and become a uh, follower of Krishna and, uh, you know, and, and then worship uh, Lord Krishna and so on and so forth. But we said, okay, we don't want bhakti part in it. We just want the practical aspect of that text because there's so much of wisdom that we can use from that text in our 
everyday lives to deal with our everyday problems. And that's why the name in itself is practically Gita. If you look at the artwork, it has got no element of how the traditional, you know, or religious artwork would look like. And uh, the overall uh, vibe of the show we've created is like very casual uh, and fun stuff with a lot of insight in that. And I think uh, usually when Gita texts are sort of spread or shared with the people, they are a bit serious and, um, you know, in, in not not in a lot of fun uh, around there. So we said not fun in a, a bad sense, but you know, just making it lighthearted for people to digest the information and make sense of what is being shared in the podcast. And that, um, you know, that kind of combination worked like charm. And that because that happens to be, uh, you know, one of our uh, most listened podcasts. Exactly. And uh, talking about reaching millions of people, when you started podcasting, India was really in an initial stage of podcasting. So how did you make your voice reach to the audiences and how confident were you like that how india would receive it um you know the the uh, one of the things when i was saying that hey you know what i want to put out this conversations as podcast i was listening to a lot of podcasts as well outside of india right and there were a lot of shows which would feature you know inspiring interesting stories of successful people outside of india but there were none uh, nobody in india who was doing that kind of podcast and i saw that as an opportunity and i said okay let me do this podcast and let me share you know the indian success stories and that's uh, that's how i started the inspiring talk and when i started like i said there were not so many people doing podcasts but the podcast listenership was growing and there was a data that came which said there were 25 million podcast listeners in 2017 which was the year that i started podcast and last year there were almost 100 million that's like you know massive growth in podcast and it's predicted that this year the number is going to go somewhere around, uh, you know, 170 million. But I think we, we are easily going to be at somewhere around 200 million, right? But uh, the point is, uh, when I was doing the podcast, it felt like I was almost like, you know, the one guy sitting in a bedroom and just recording the podcast conversation, don't know who's going to listen and stuff like that. Uh, but the more and more I did it, um, I realized that there were people who were tuning in. There were people who were listening to the conversations that I was doing and they were finding value in what I was sharing, right? And and that was, I knew that I, I'm a bit early in this game, but I also knew that this is growing. So I knew that it's just about time that when, you know, people will start tuning into podcasting and look what's happening uh, right now. Every creator is now jumping into creating podcasts and uh Bollywood is jumping into podcast now quite literally like you know brands are investing heavily into podcasting so uh, I saw that coming uh, a very slow growth but I knew that it's gonna happen so yeah I think 200 million is a lot for this year and one of the reasons it's growing so much is also Vijay Gautam and his podcasting workshops <laughs> it's so catchy the advertisement and you literally gave us a lot to, you know, think about. And every day there's something new and insightful that you gave us in the weekly lives. So that's awesome, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, you know, and I think um, one of the things that I've realized is the people who have gone through the course, right? And uh, today, right, anybody can become a podcaster. And uh, technology makes it easy that you can quite literally download anchor on your phone and then you can record and then you can become a podcaster right but the point is if you just do that you are wasting your time efforts and energy if you are not putting enough time in understanding and creating something that will help you stand out of the crowd and that's something you know that's what i try to do with the um you know with the course so and there are so many uh, people in in the course who are doing amazing shows you know you are one of those people and uh, also there are people who are winning awards you know there, there's this award called most empowering podcast award that's given given by women's web and uh, you know two years back to back the students you know of the course will uh, won the award so those are the kind of things that tells me that hey you know what the, whatever people are learning and creating content uh, you know, from this course, they are doing creating much better content than most of the uh, people who just uh, do it without much planning. Exactly. And your course uh, gave us a lot of confidence, to be honest, with creating. And uh, like when I started, I did not know that I could do that in like so quickly. Yeah. So the points that you gave us were very helpful in getting the idea and setting the backbone of the podcast. And I still remember those things and I still keep them in mind and keep the podcast going in that way so that I don't lose hope. And that's the reason I think I reached 
37 episodes so far. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I have to reach more because there are people that have given me target. Thank awesome. You. It's going to be my 100th guest. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't even think I would make 50, but okay, now I got to nice. make 99. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love uh, doing that as well. Um, you know, when people ask me to become guests, then I say that I'm going to be your 25th episode. And the reason for that is I want you to podcast at least for six months. And if you are not, and you know, if you if you say that, BJ, I loved your program, I want to have you as my first guest. I'm saying, no, I'm not going to become your first guest. What if you just, you know, interview me and lose the steam and then never record a second episode? Right. I want you to be consistent till 25th episode and I'm going to be your 25th episode guest. That's very true, Vijay, because I think uh, a lot of motivation, like when I started the podcast and I'm sure with you also, it might have happened that we're not confident with, with, with our guests. Like we call them and let's say they say yes. Now you're like, what should I ask? And we are very nervous and our first episodes are really awful. Like mine, yeah. in my case, I started Zoom <laughs> and I did not even know how to use Zoom. Yeah. So my first was so awkward and then the second and the third. And then I think that it's good that they are saying that they are going to come late so that we are more prepared with ourselves. And now we can have more conversations, not just ask and throw questions on our guests, you know, and be more confident in the conversation, basically, because the more podcasts we take, the more episodes that we are doing, the more we learn with ourselves as well. In your case as well, I think uh, you completed 153 episodes so far, which are amazing. And the quality every day increases. I have followed you from the time that you started in the beginning. And I can see how the growth has been. So the, the guests that you have got in your podcast, so how has that helped with you in the conversations with yourself and changing your life as well? Um, you know, tremendously. Uh, if I were to just answer that with one word, but uh, like you said, every single episode, I'm learning so much in those conversations, right? And there is, and uh, and like I said earlier, it so happens that whatever that I'm looking at learning in my life, I'll go and find the person and help me understand about that topic. And that's what I do on my podcast. If I want to understand about, uh, you know, um, relationships, then I'll find a a uh, relationship expert who can help me understand how one can really create great relationships. If I am trying to, you know, plan my life, then I'll find somebody who can give me a structure that I can use to, um, you know, plan my life. Uh, if I'm looking at, you know, getting uh, better at want to go work out and get better um, and, and become healthy, then I'll find somebody who has done extensive work in that and then who can break down the frameworks uh, for me, right? So from that perspective, um, everything that I, everyone that I bring on the podcast has got something that they are going to share, which is going to help me become better, at least of, by, you know, few percentages in, in that aspect of my life. And that is something that has always been my focus in, uh, in getting the people right. And that's why I'm not interested in getting big CXOs of the companies, not because there's nothing that I can learn from them. It's just because I'm focused more on personal growth and I'm not looking at talking about, okay, let, tell me, you know, what are your jobs as a CXO? What do you do in your organization and stuff like that? That's not of any interest to me. I'm interested in hearing from people who are make, doing some change, like, you know, bring some, uh, some real value which can help people get better in their life, relationship, business, career, or the other way I put it is mind, body, and soul. So that's, uh, you know, any of those topics fascinates me and I invite people. And uh, right from, like you said, you followed me from the very, very beginning from my own communication skill to how I speak. You know, it has, I, uh, you know, I, I don't... Um, I don't think it would have ever been possible if I didn't do that first episode. And, uh, you know, and oftentimes I meet people, um, I met a blogger who is a very popular one. And I, he, you know, he was telling me that, you know what, BJ, for the first two years of my blogging journey, I wrote so horribly that I was ashamed of them. I deleted all those blogs. I'm like, I don't want those blogs to be out there. But I said, I, I don't want to delete any of my episodes because I want, you know, to... I want those episodes to remind myself where I started and also anybody who would like to embark on this journey 
for them as an inspiration hey look at this is where this guy started and where he is right now uh and i'm not saying that i'm the best communicator i'm on my journey but hey i know that i have made tremendous uh you know progress in um how i uh, articulate things how i communicate with people how i have conversations with people on the podcast how i ask questions and so on and so forth right so um so i think you know that's been a great journey and uh, also learning from some of the people and the fundamental mindset shift happens when you uh, spend a lot of time with people who are making things exactly and i think sometimes when people say that if you have to do that self growth and change yourself you need to change your environment and i think podcasting helps do that a lot because otherwise where else are we going to find that environment <laughs> okay. true yeah and coming with that uh, i have a very nice question for you and asking for a friend but <laughs> do you feel anxieties every time you take a podcast episode with a new guest because i do <laughs> every <laughs> time a new guest comes and i know that guest and like with you also i know you and i have talked to you before even so every time before i start a podcast i will have some amount of anxiety bhagwan ye galat na jaye and may i ask good questions and may they feel better in my podcast not feel like oh what question is she asking etc do you feel those anxieties and how do you overcome them are a percent every single time i feel uh, those questions and uh, honestly i think it's good to have that uh, bit of anxiety because that shows that you are serious about this if you do not feel any of that then you just don't care right you just don't care the question that you'll ask you just don't care how the interview will go you just will go get on a conversation you record it and we will put it out there it doesn't matter to you right but if you are if you have a little bit of anxiety that means you want it to go right you want to value the person's time you want the best information to come out of the person and it's not just only because what the person will think also because i want to add a lot of value to my audience because i want to extract the information out of this person which is going to add a lot of value to my audience which my audience will feel that wow that was a really great episode with a lot of wisdom and insight in that episode and i think um so uh, how do i overcome it um i would say one thing that i do is i uh, the way i do it is um i prepare it in a way that i you know just go and find every little information that i can find about the guest and put it in a uh, you know evernote and organize all of the stuff and the other thing is um a lot of people invite me on the podcast and and here's the here's the thing that i would say right a lot of people feel that every minute that i spend sharing or doing a small talk that's the time wasted of the guest you know i don't want to waste the time of this person so i would rather say that hey how are you let's get started and just get started right where i'm myself not at comfortable in front of guest the guest himself or herself is not comfortable yet in opening doesn't know who i am uh and i said okay let's get started then you are not spending that time to form a bond with the guest um taking that time to talk about um the guest and casually trying to understand what's happening in the life and you know one simple thing if you don't know what should i talk about then i would say every single person who's listening to this right now has got at least one thing interesting that's going on in their life and i'm sure your guest will also have something interesting that's going on in your life so like all of us will be like you are so excited about that thing happening in your life you'll we'll talk about it right so maybe your guest has got just you know they just got a uh, they just had a baby or maybe they just got a pet or they just came back from vacation or something or the other exciting that's going on in their life that will get them talking and when they start talking they will start feeling closer to you and you will be at ease your guest will be at ease and then you can have a conversation without those barriers and the second thing that i'll share is a lot of that anxiety also comes from uh, one of my guests taught me is called kaba what he said is chota aadmi bada aadmi syndrome sometimes we think that you know like we feel that you know i'm inferior to my guest so uh, this is a bada aadmi and you know as because this person is uh, you know uh, um, is so successful or what what not 
um you know i'm no nothing in front of this person and that is the barrier it took me the longest to break but when i used to sort of uh, get in conversation with a lot of people in the beginning uh especially the wildly successful people i used to feel that oh my god this guy has done all of this and i've quite literally not done anything in my life you know and that's what i used to feel but then i realized that uh, the the fact that the person agreed to become on your podcast means that the person respect what you are doing and if the person respects what you are doing you don't have to feel that you are inferior to the person that's one and second while that person might be successful in one aspect of their life whatever that is the business the book they have written or whatever the reason that you are getting the person does not mean that the person has all their life sorted nobody's life is sorted 100% right so um so i think uh, you know um so the the this phenomenon is called halo effect where uh, you know if there is one aspect of the person if if you if you think that the person has this one good quality or this succeeded in one aspect then we like to assume that this person might be great in the other aspects as well or is successful in other aspects as well right uh, but uh, but what really helped me is making a deep friendship with some of the wildly successful people and understanding that they had some broken parts which was bothering them and uh, to the point where i felt that i i don't think i would have i would exchange my life with theirs even though they are so successful but there's such a you know broken part and you know thing that's that's going on in their life right so the point being um we all um have something that the other person envies about other person aspire or wish to have so having that understanding then really eases you out like hey it doesn't matter if he's like you know the um he's the ceo of the billion dollar company but i'm sure there is something that the person you know um might have uh, which which is bothering him and stuff like that because nobody um is 100% person maybe there is one thing that you are better than that billionaire right so yeah very beautifully said bijay and i think everybody is human that's where we lack to think of our guest as we think they are a million dollar speaker or million dollar company owner but they're all humans so it's kind of good to break that ice and like you said talk about their lives and try to know them and that even proves us that we are really genuinely interested in them and that yes. has helped me a lot so abhijay one more question that um, when you told your parents that you're switching your scientist job to become a podcaster and start a wine studios how was their reaction to this new switch um so my parents wanted uh, me to go to the us and uh, um i was top at my college so they knew that i was doing academically well uh, my college uh, uh, you know awarded me as the best student of pharmacy because i was not only the top of the geeky types i uh, loved being outside of the classroom then being in the classroom because i felt lectures were way too boring um so i looked for the opportunity to be outside of the classroom doing extracurricular activities and stuff like that so i was like this all rounder so all my life during my school i was never a topper i never thought i could be a topper so all my life during my you know school time i did was just did this stuff right uh, you know leading teams creating clubs in the uh, in the school and and taking part in extracurricular activities you know uh, debate and speech were my thing so i would do all of that and every time there was a speech or debate competition everybody knew who's going to take the award home uh and you know so from that perspective i was doing all of that in my school right so when i came to the college i you know first day i had nothing to do and um uh, i focused on study and i i i surprised myself uh by being a top of the class which was insane <laughs> and uh, and i uh, and i you know and and again here's the thing here's how the um you know this bias also works right and this is a and if anybody who's here who's in college right now here's how, what i would say be a great student for the first year of your college get the best mark possible be the great student be the most obedient student for the first year next three years are going to be the smoothest as hell and that's exactly what happened um so i 
I, you know, honestly, like now this is probably the first time that I'm sharing this, um, uh, like confessing this. I only did a lot of hard work in the first year of my college. Other three years were just me getting like reaping the uh, bonus of the impression that was created in the first year. This guy is the topper. Every practical, I would get like 99 because this guy is the topper, right? So, and 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 sometimes like, you know, in theory, I would get less than a lot of my classmates, but because I, you know, teachers had a bias that this guy is a topper because of the, you know, because of the, like the almost full marks on the practicals that I would get, I would still be the topper. And that continued for the next three years. Mm -hmm. And now I knew that this is going to be, I'm going to remain topper. I did a lot of stuff. Anyways, the point was because of all this, right. Um, I had a really good um, a mark sheet. I had a really good, um, extracurricular and stuff like that. So my teacher said that, hey, you should go for the masters and get scholarship and stuff like that so that you can live a great life for yourself and also create a great life for us. Um, and I was preparing for GRE. I was doing podcast. I would go and study GRE, uh, you know, for a, for a few days. And then that would bore me to death thinking that I already hate my job and I'm going to go in, uh, take masters in the same for the next uh, two years and then leave rest of my life becoming you know in the lab which is something that I can't imagine um, and then I'll go back and focus on podcast and my parents would notice that he's not you know doing any of the GRE prep and they'll say hey what's up with this and I'll say oh okay I'll go that and this kind of switching happened for a while and then one day I told them that hey you know what this is not what I want to do with my life I packed all my, uh, you know, GRE stuff and um, threw it in the corner of the house and said, okay, this is it. Just give me one year of my life. If I'm able to make anything out of this, great. If not, then I'm going to live the rest of the life in your terms. But I need one year of my life from you. And uh, um, and my dad ended up not talking to me for two weeks. Um, but they didn't open their mouth for the next one year. And they didn't say anything for the next one year because they knew he's going to fail. They knew that after a year, he's going to go to the US and do his master's and then whatever, whatnot. Uh, but then within one year, I quit my job and I was doing a lot of stuff and uh, we've never looked back. So, so yeah. That's wonderful. But how do they feel now that you're so successful with the podcasting that you asked for a year and now you're doing great at it? Now they are happy. They don't. They still don't understand what exactly do I do, and uh, you know, uh, and how do I make money. But uh, uh, but they are they are happy about the fact that uh, you know. And now the thing is, um, oh, you know what? I didn't say anything at that time. Like I was so supportive of you. My mom is that. <laughs> uh, even though she was like, she was not on. She was playing very diplomatic. She was on neither dad's <laughs> side. While she was on dad's side, I knew, but she didn't say it loud. That, oh, you know what, you should do it, forget about it and stuff like that. And now she says, I to never told you, no. I to told you, you do whatever you do, which again, <laughs> but TK. Yeah. So yeah, playing on the safe side. That's yeah. good, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thing to learn from moms as well through this podcast. <laughs> All right. Vijay coming towards the travel part of this podcast. So um, tell us about your life in Nepal. I'm so interested in the culture of Nepal and yeah. it's a beautiful place where you come from. So tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about your place. So I think uh, what I would say is, uh, you know, a lot of places in Nepal are still untouched. Untouched in the sense, like a lot of people go to Pokhara. So Pokhara is this tourist, one of the most popular tourist tourist destinations outside of Kathmandu in Nepal. Um, because of the, there's a lake called Fewa Lake, which is a beautiful, beautiful lake uh, in Pokhara. And that has been a tourist place for, uh, you know, for a really, really long time, right? And that's one of the one of the places which get most of the tourists, other than Lumbini, which is the birthplace of Gautam Buddha, and you know they do have temples and stuff like that, right? So, so that's one. But there is other lake in Nepal called Rara Lake, which I would say is ten times beautiful than uh, Fewa Lake, right? Um, and that lake is now just some of in the past few years only some of the domestic tourists have started going there 
before that like it was untouched so even today it's like almost untouched it's it it's best like you know there are so many such places so nepal tourism's one uh, you know tagline which is naturally nepal once is not enough uh, and you know that is something that i think it's so true about the country y- you just can't explain it in words you have to go to experience it there exactly i want to but i don't know when i can i so want to visit nepal and where is your hometown by the way what's it called um, so we originally come from a place called uh, bagnung which is 70 kilometers from pokhara and okay. uh, so from one tourist place to we moved to another place uh, right now the place that we live in is 50 kilometers from lumbini which is again um, the birthplace of gautam buddh so yeah. wow see you get to see so much just in your hometown <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, and you had an experience with bungee jumping. So tell me a little about that experience. Oh yeah, so um again, right, so this place near uh you know Pokhara. So my grandmother used to uh you know live there. So I was there um I think it was 2019 just before COVID. Yeah. It was just before COVID I was there. So uh, you know, my grandmother just turned 84 and when anybody leaves um and turn 84, uh you know there is a puja that uh, family organizes and you know it's like a big affair that somebody you know lived so long funny thing my, my grandmother at 84 she used to in the village like climb trees and get get the stuff for the uh you know yeah yeah, yeah for the buffalo's cows buffalo's not cows that we had in our home she was super active and you know her eyesight is better than mine she uh she i don't i i don't have any hair left she her hair at 84 i think she's not even completely white right now she has got uh she still has uh, 60% of black hair left on her awesome. head so um so anyway so um so during that puja like i was i was going there and then um so there one of the i think it's one of the easiest highest bungee jump and world's second highest bungee jump uh, it's some 210 meters or 270 meters i don't remember what exactly uh, what's the height was i think it was 210 or 270 i'll have to check um so um so yeah so it is one of the second highest uh, you know in terms of length and one of the things with me is i love adventure and i don't think about it before i get there a lot of people you know overthink with things oh you know what if i'm going to go on a bungee how you know they are going to tie the you know this thing here oh what if i you know i don't think any of those i'm like okay i want to do it and i'll just go there and then just i'm standing there at the cliff and that's when i think that oh fuck am i really doing this <laughs> and then there's no point about you know there's no point thinking about it now right uh, so so that's that's who i am right so i've done uh, you know paragliding uh the same thing i'm like okay i'm going to go and do it like a lot of excitement a lot of adrenaline and like the moment we jump off the cliff like what oh, really are we doing it and like <laughs> there's no way um t- there's no no going back right and that's me uh the same with rafting and so on and so forth right so i i love doing uh, doing the, you know um being part of adventure sports and uh, you know bungee happened that way as well like a lot of my you know quite few my friends uh, from pokhara said that hey you know seven of us are going for bungee would you like to join since you are here i said oh that would be great so i think we're eight of us who went there and uh, and then i was standing there at the cliff and the guy said that don't look down and just keep moving and i said there's nothing left in this uh, at, in the edge where do you want me to move <laughs> and he said uh, okay then now jump and i'm like oh, what are you saying like <laughs> am i supposed to jump here and he said like okay 3 2 1 and he pushed me off the <laughs> <laughs> off the edge uh, um so i think um, that jump that particular you know uh, place uh, and every bungee jump has their own um, so the the best thing that you enjoy in bungee jump is the free fall the you know number of seconds where you don't like the free fall it's called right where you uh, just jump off and before um, you know you fall to the place where the thread becomes tight and then it starts holding you right so it takes almost 4 seconds uh, for that to happen you jump off and for 4 seconds you feel nothing you don't feel the rope because the rope is like letting you go down down and it's not tight yet for 4 seconds i was like fuck am i alive and like what's going on i couldn't i it was like you know it is such a beautiful feeling you just feel nothing you just can't you just don't feel anything right and mm. and then then uh, and then when the thread gave a bit of a jock 
and i'm like okay i'm alive and that's <laughs> when you know it, it, it that's uh, um yeah i think you know that uh, after that um, i think i also ended up shooting a video while on the uh, hmm, i saw that uh, yeah that was awesome i I'm didn't know giving, the background yeah, still, <laughs> yeah still giving the gan there so um so yeah but uh, but that 4 seconds um of nothingness if i may is something um that was very very beautiful and i would love to i know i i am scared af uh but i think if anybody said that hey let's go bungee then i won't say no like okay let's do it so <laughs> yeah and then when you're at the edge you'll be like let's redo yeah. that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean now i'm like you know on my head i'm like what well, damn it, it's almost feeling that my mind probably is bursting like as if i'm going to jump off the cliff right now so <laughs> yeah that's awesome we didn't know the behind the scenes but this was yeah but i think it's um, i i would highly encourage anybody to sort of you know experience it once a lifetime so i mean it's it's great experience next you got to do the skydiving yeah i mean that's on my list that's like the next thing that's on my list the skydiving i keep on seeing the uh, dubai thing um and you know that's definitely on my list mm-hmm. in the dubai one they tell you like i'm like uh, it's too hot in dubai so how is it like but then you're so in the air that you don't feel the hot then mm-hmm. you feel really cold also yeah. then when your body is in the survival mode you know you're, yeah. you're you're pretty much jumping off a plane so. yeah yeah true <laughs> so at that point of time you don't feel anything and your body does wonders with you that's when you're at the edge of anything you know that's when you know that your body is way more beyond and beautifully made than what you can really imagine sitting that's at so home that's so beautiful yeah that's true yeah. that's yeah. true <laughs> all right so there was a, a time when you got your first mic and that was a very beautiful story and what really touched me was the mic that didn't work out well for somebody else's life changed your yeah. life mm. that was beautiful while one yeah. dream was dying and other started yeah that's sad and beautiful both yeah 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 when i started you know um when i said that i want to start a podcast and um, you know i was like okay if you want to do a podcast then you need a microphone right and uh, i realized that i won't be able to afford new microphone that was an amazon i think it was um for some 20000 bucks and i said okay i can't afford this mic for 20k then what's the next option so i turned to olex and i saw this guy who was selling this microphone and i i texted him and i said that hey would you like to sell the microphone to me and he said okay what's your offer i told him this is how much i can give and, and he agreed and, and and we planned a fixed a date and i met him uh, at metro station um i think it's one of the old delhi side metro station i don't remember what exactly the metro station was uh so i met this guy there at the metro station he comes with this box of the microphone like whole packaged it was almost as if it was a new mic you know from the box and stuff like that and uh, you know i sat down there in the metro station i opened my laptop i connected it i checked it if it's working fine and stuff like that it was working all right and then uh, while i was making the payment i asked him um hey why are you selling this mic and he said something right he said uh, you know my sister she was a singer she used to uh, sing the song and recently she got married and she's not going to be singing anymore and at that moment i felt that here is one dream that just died with this microphone and my dream it just getting started and uh, you know that was something you know that's how i sort of you know got that microphone and i recorded that mic for almost two and a half years or three and later on i bought another one mic but that mic you know serves as a reminder that um you know you can always you know start your dream you can always start on the journey uh whatever that journey might be for you whether you've been thinking of writing a book or starting a podcast or uh taking up course or moving to a new country whatever that could be there can always be a new beginning and that's something um uh, is so profound for me when when he shared that that you know when he shared that you know my sister she's not going to be singing anymore it felt so bad at one part and also on the other part i was so excited that i have this microphone uh, which i am going to be using to create podcast and that was that was a you know really really 
um, you know, mixed feeling uh, that I had at that moment at that in that metro station. Yes, and that's that's a very very beautiful story. Every time I read it, and every time I talk about it, it's it's, it's always beautiful to hear that. <laughs> Any last message for our listeners and viewers? Um, I think uh, I would say you know, um, keep exploring. One of the things that I think that has changed my life more than anything is exploring you know and we all are exploring in our lives and uh, that goes with the theme of the podcast as well yes. um you know um, so when you're ex- exploring i to some extent also connect with curiosity where be genuinely curious about things right uh whatever that is about life about toughest questions that you want to answer in your life or about the career that you want to do or the things that are happening in the world generally i think curiosity is such a uh, you know such a beautiful thing that leads to discovering and exploring a lot of uh, you know things in your life so you know when you're when you're curious you're exploring a lot of things and when you're exploring a lot of things then you might end up uh, discovering something which can really really lead your life somewhere so that's what i would say and i'm honestly on the same journey as everyone else is thank you for bringing this up because inspiring explorers when i started and the name is really confusing but then i went with it because my heart was in inspiring explorers i wanted the inspiring life journeys and then i wanted people like bijay to come on my show and then share their stories as well so both in their journey of life as well as traveling so thank you for putting this up together for us so thank you so much bijay for being on inspiring explorers and sharing such amazing insights and stories and inspiring us thank you so much thank you minakshi thank you so much for having me on the show really enjoyed same here so this was bijay's inspiring life journey so far and some interesting travel experiences thank you so much for giving your precious time to this podcast if this episode was inspiring and insightful please subscribe to my youtube channel or come connect with me on my instagram at the rate my poho voyage all links to reach out to me and my guests are mentioned in the description box below do check also the video version of the episodes are on my youtube channel links in the description also please don't forget to connect with me on instagram and youtube send me a hi or drop a comment so that i know we are in this journey together this is manakshi your host for inspiring explorers saying goodbye see you next time with another amazing inspiring interview till then take care